Hello everyone. Today's video is about implementing ASP.NET Core identity authentication into an existing Blazor server app. And our target framework is .NET 6. So here you can see this is my Blazor application that doesn't contain authentication. Okay. So now I am going to implement ASP.NET Core identity authentication into my Blazor application. And here one more thing we have to focus that uh, my Blazor application is .NET 6, which is a latest framework. So if you are using Visual Studio Code Editor and .NET CLI command for developing .NET as like me, we have to install one, one plugin that is like .NET ASP.NET Code Generator. Okay, we should install this tool globally into our system. Okay, if you haven't installed already, please make sure to install because I have already installed this into my system globally. Okay, for Visual Studio users, this command no need to install. Okay, and now we have to install one NuGet package like Microsoft.VisualStudio.Web.CodeGeneration.Design. So Visual Studio users copy the command from package manager. Since I am using CLI, I am going to copy it from here. So let's install it. So let's install the Microsoft.VisualStudio.Web.CodeGeneration.Design package. And next package that we have to install is Microsoft.NTFrameworkCore.Design. So let's install this package as well. So let's install it. And next package that we have to install is SQL Server related package that belongs to NT framework that is Microsoft.NT framework core dot SQL Server. So this package to establish communication between our C code and SQL Server. So let's install this package as well. Let's install. And for en enabling the NT framework core scaffolding, we have to install a package like Microsoft.NT framework core dot tools. Let's install it. And next package that is related to ASP.NET core identity and which is dependent on NT framework core. So let's install the package like Microsoft.ASP.NET core dot identity dot NT framework core. So let's install it. And ASP.NET core dot identity comes with a built in UA features and logic. So to make available them into our application, we have to install one more you get package like Microsoft.ASP.NETCore.identity.UI. Let's install it. Let's install it. So those are all the packages, around seven packages we have installed for integrating authentication into our Blazor server application. And you can see all the packages that we have just installed, references are added to the C -sharp project file. Now using ASP.NET Core Scaffolder, let's generate some identity files. Okay. So here is the command for scaffolding for our identity UI that is like .NET space, ASP.NET Code Generator space, identity space, use the default UI as a flag. So by default, identity will contain all the logic like account lockout, account like account login, user registration, password change, forgot password, account forgot, a two-factor authentication, all the logical implementation is already built by the ASP.NET Core library. So it will contain all the related UI. But to work with only few UI files, we can use a flag like use the default UI. So this will generate only few files. So where we can override some required functionality into the ASP.NET Core identity library. Okay, so let's run the command. So after successfully running the identity scaffolder, you can see here areas file has been generated. So it contains some stuff that related to ASP.NET Core identity. So 
if you expand them you can observe like identity data db context has been added so this is the db context that is communicate with with our authentication tables okay along with areas folder we can also observe some changes in the program.cs file like db context configuration and identity configuration and treasure page service registration you can observe these are automatically added are injected into our program.cs file after running the identity ui scaffolder okay now in the accepting.json file in the connection string settings you can observe identity data context connection string so you can replace this connection string with your own connection string i am going to use my own connection string so please add your own connection string here okay and we have to write some additional logic for authentication so instead of we writing everything manually let's do a some smart work here okay so our smart work is we are going to create a new blazor server application and we name it like a lookup project and we create by default authentication enabling into that project means by default authentication means nothing but our asp.net core identity will be added to the application okay so what is the benefit of this means we can just copy paste the all required authentication logic from this lookup project into our original blazor server application this makes our implementation very easy and very effective because we are going to copy paste that trusted code that was defined by the microsoft okay so let's create the another project with authentication and name that project like lookup so once our authentication implementation is finished we can absolutely free to delete this project okay so lookup project has been successfully created let's open this project as well first thing is go to the program.cs file in the lookup project and here you can see authentication and authorization middleware so just copy them and switch to our original blazor server go to program.cs file okay and here add those both the middleware okay authentication and authorization now let's go to app bar dot riser in our existing blazor file so this is the routing template or blazor component okay so without authentication the template look like this, like this now switch to our lookup project and here also search for app dot riser file but here you can observe instead of the router as a parent there is one more component that is wrapped around as a parent component that is cascading authentication state so this is the main component that injects or provides the authenticated user information into the all the blazor component pages so this component should be wrapped around the router component in our blazor server application in our existing blazor server application so what we can do just and copy the entire co content in this component and go to our original blazor application and paste it over here okay that is the second step now again i am in lookup project in lookup project i want to go to shared folder and inside of the shared folder there is a blazor component like login display okay so we want to add this file into our original project okay so copy this file and switch to our blazor server application and inside of the shared folder paste it okay once you added the login display component you have to configure it into the main layout razor so go to main layout razor and here below the anchor tag about anchor tag let's add a login display component now in the lookup project in areas under identity inside of the pages inside of the accounts you can observe the logout component this html page so let's copy that file and exact same location into our application we have to 
paste it. So according to our lookup project, inside of pages, identity, inside of pages, we should have accounts folder. So inside of accounts folder, add the our copied file that is logout file. Okay. And you can observe one more file in the shared folder that is login partial.cshtml. So copy that as well. And create a shared folder inside of the identity. And paste it here. Okay. And in lookup, you can observe one more file like in the area section only revalidating identity. Okay. So we have to copy this file as well into our existing project. So it should be directly under the identity folder path. Okay, and just change the namespace. Okay, and we have to register this revalidating identity authentication state provider against default authentication state provider. Because if you go to peek into the definition of the implementation, you can observe it is ultimately inheriting the authentication state provider, which is the main default state provider in the Blazor application for injecting the authentication user information as a property like authentication state provider. Okay, we should register again this auth state provider. So copy this. So here let's register our revalidating identity authentication state provider like builder dot services dot add open registration against authentication state provider okay and register our revalidating let me copy it from here Okay, let's import the namespace. And here we have to define identity user. Okay, since because this class implementing the key user, right? We have to pass our identity user that loads from the ASP.NET Core identity library. That is the logic we have to integrate into our application. Now, just run the uh, DB migration command and create the database, and we are good to test our application for login or registration using the ASP.NET Core identity in our Blazor server application. Okay, so let's run the EF Core command for uh, running them, creating the migration. So first let's create a migration, database migration. Okay, so here is the command like .NET space EF space migration space add space name of my migration. I have given like first migration. So let's run the command. Okay, now let's update the migration. So this is the command to update the database or migration changes like .NET space EF space database space update. So you can see here some SQL commands are executed. If we go to our database and refresh our tables, you can see 
ASP.NET role claims, ASP.NET roles, ASP.NET user role claims, ASP.NET logins, roles, users, and tokens. So these are all the default tables that are going to be created by the ASP.NET Core Identity Library. Okay, so these will be managed by the ASP.NET Core Identity DB context, which is automatically created when we install the library. So that is like in the areas folder under that data you can see right so this is the db context that's going to manage all these tables for enabling the authentication into our application okay so now i can close my lookup project because i have finished my authentication login okay now in i now i am in my original blazor server application okay so final uh, step is to test our application so now this is my page and you can see you can observe this here registration and login buttons are now appearing so where they are coming from so if you recall we have added a login display component right here you can see the registration and login links okay now let's register a user into our application see this is the page that is loading from the ASP.NET Identity UI library. Okay, we have installed one package, ASP.NET Core Identity UI package. Let me show you. So here is the NuGet package. That package contains UI files regarding to our authentication. So the file here loading from that library itself. Okay, let me register my account. Okay. And let me register without confirm password and let's see what it will do. See here, automatically validation firing. That means ASP.NET identity library is built with all the features that are required for a authentication application. Okay, so let me give you a proper password. Okay, now I have successfully registered. Since it is a local development, right? I won't receive any email address. But to understand the application and to make our registration valid registration, I identity library by default provides us here. Click here as a email confirmation. In real world, you should override this functionality. Okay, so so that user can directly come from their email address for development itself. For development purpose only, identity library doing like this. But for production development, we have to override the logic itself. Okay. So I am confirming my account. So email is confirmed successfully. I can log in again. So this is my login page. This is one more new page that is coming from the ASP.NET Core Identity UI library. So let me log in with my credentials just I have created. See, I am successfully authenticated and here you can see my username, okay, as a authentication. And if you inspect element and go to application, network application, and here in the cookies, you can, you can observe identity application cookies. So identity that works with cookie-based authentication, okay? So the, that cookie is nothing but this this is our authentication cookie okay so that's all about integrating integrating the asp.net core identity authentication into the existing blazor application i hope this video has delivered some useful information to you all if you like my video please support me by subscribing to the channel soon we are going to meet with a new video until then signing off